<laughs> Greetings, YouTube. Danny Staten here on the Daily Dan Blog. Today we're looking at Alice Cooper versus Chaos. Number three from 2014. I bought this book because of that really cool Alice Cooper on the cover. I think that's going to look great up on my wall. What do you think? And I have to give credit where credit's due. This book is full of the comic book art that I really like. It's, it's a great cover. I can't wait to put this bad boy on the wall. Let's bust it open. See what happens inside. So in this glossy ass book from 2014, you can see right here who drew it, who created it, and who wrote it. So if you have any complaints, you know who to write letters and tell to suck it. As we see some more great Alice Cooper art. It's taking place at a rave in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where Alice Cooper has gathered a band of heroes to help tra track down the evil demon known as Chaos. And his heroes are in trouble as we start in issue three. And I don't think I'm going to buy no more issues besides issue three. Uh, oh, my God. So, in full panels, brought to you by the Daily Damn Blog, we're going to see Alice Cooper questioning a demon. He's in search of chaos, and he's wanting this thing to talk. Alice Cooper is the man of darkness. Yes. And look, he even got somebody looking like Iron Man over here in his little team of superheroes. Ain't they cool? Got vampires and all kind of stuff helping him hunt down. The evil demon chaos for some reason. That they tell you in issue one and two that I did not have. So I'm just going to assume he had a good reason to hunt them down, right? So in this full panel acid trip brought to you by the Daily Dan blog, you can see all the big demons getting all pissed off at being questioned by Alice Cooper's glary ass team of superheroes. He's put together to help track down this demon called Chaos who has escaped from hell. Well, demons have escaped from hell and scientists have called Alice Cooper to help Track them down, scientists. What the fuck? Look at that one big demon then turned into swamp thing and be running out on them there. Look how big that sucker is. Wow, he's like 90 foot tall and running out through the swamp, crashing and destroying everything as his team of heroes turn out to be a little sucky at what they do. What the frig? Flash forward 20 years in the future where a scientist is talking about what happened back in the day where the Hulk Alice Cooper here and his band of heroes fought the demons in... The past. Wow, wow, wow. It's going to be one of these flash forward, flashback, lost kind of books. Ah, look, they even got little robots in the future helping control things. Oh, my God. Whoever wrote this book ought to be castrated. It has a horrible story with flash forwards and flashbacks and flash headaches. Ah, ah God. Well, it's nice to know in the future that the scientists have Alice Cooper, the Hulk Alice Cooper's back, as they plot their little visits and how to... Go back in time? What the? What the? Ah! Back in the past, Vampire Chick is going one-on-one -on -one with the Hounds of Hell, and she's a pissed-off vampire. Wow. Did you know Hellhounds could get real big and generate size? I didn't know that. Anyway, Vampire Chick's all pissed off at the Hellhounds. Eh, they're gonna fight, but Alice Cooper shows up and says, I am the master of darkness, motherfucker, and y'all need to get on back. Alice Cooper has taken control of the situation here, back in the day. Oh, as they're lost in a swamp, it looks like. Well, so YouTube, you know what happens when you're lost in a swamp with Alice Cooper and you're walking around? You're going to run across a big Scooby-Doo looking mansion out in the middle of that goddamn swamp. Now you go. Alice Cooper and the vampire find a house that's not really a house in the middle of the swamp. Wow. Then you get some cool-ass commercials for Red Sonja. I really dig the art in the Red Sonja. You can see Red Sonja comic book review here on the Daddy Damn blog. Check out the playlist. And then you get a little look at that first issue of De-Evolution. And I actually looked through some De-Evolution comics. And I was hoping they'd be based on the movie. And, you know, the one with David Duchovny. But they weren't. And it sucks. So I didn't pick up this crap. So, in full panels, full glossy-ass shiny panels, brought to you by the Daddy Damn Blog, you can see the Alice Cooper's little team of misfit superheroes as they run around in their van like Scooby-Doo and the gang, searching for Alice Cooper and the vampire chick who's lost in the swamp. Wow, they ain't got a little band like a Scooby-Doo, boy, don't you just hate this freaking story? This has got to be one of the suckiest stories I've ever talked about in my life. And full panels brought to you by the Daily Dan Blog. Look, the swamp thing tree crashed them. It don't even have to be alive to crash them because they can't drive like Fred from, from Scooby-Doo. Fred's a good driver. Anyway, they crashed. They're in the swamp. They're seeing some orbs. I don't know if they, they're seeing orbs because they got hit in the head and they're all bloodied up from being horrible drivers or if there's actually some orbs and shit going on. Well, this comic looks like an acid trip from hell and it really kind of blows on the story. 
So, meanwhile, in the future, the Hulk, Alice Cooper, continues to go over stuff with the scientists that happened in the past. As they're telling the story of what we just saw about a wreck in the swamp. Oh, God. Alice Cooper's got to go to the bathroom real bad. It looks like he's got some indigestion going on. I don't know, no, 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 that ain't what's happening. Something they got locked up is trying to break out, and they're on their way to take care of that little bit of stuff. It just looks like he's got some really bad gas going on right there, don't it? And great art. Now, I tell you what, this whoever drew this book is a art genius. Whoever wrote this book should be hurt. Nah. So, to deal with whatever's trying to break out, they're going to introduce this new hero. We call her Stitch Face, or the Crow Bitch. Uh, but she's got some great outfit on it. I love the art. Like I said, whoever drew the art is off the train. This must be Skeletor's wife or something. So, check out this. This is the Dynamite Dispatch. It's something you find in every Dynamite comic book where you can talk Dynamite business. Voila. I don't even know what to say about that. And then they get to show you a bunch of other books to let you know that Alice Cooper vs. Chaos was not the suckiest thing we put out that year. Even though that James Bond comic, well, that looks a little good. I might check out James Bond. I already did a Vampirella book. You can see that in the playlist on the Dirty Damn blog. Also, some more Vampirella stuff coming up this Halloween season. And we get a full page ad. Whoa. For Swords of Sorrow. And as for some chicks, scantily clad, barely dressed chicks, hang out in medieval times and show off their sword skills, doing a lot of sword fighting and weird stuff. Oh, I don't even know what to say about that shit. I really don't. Oh my God, YouTube! This is like Dexter comes to life. You got Seduction of the Innocent, a true horror, a true crime horror thriller. I can't wait. I might have to check out one of them Seductions of the Innocent. That's just a damn good title. And you get the evil Ernie's. In chaos, of course, reigns at dynamite, huh, purgatory, and whatever lady demon this damn thing is. Oh, oh God. They're all probably better books than this one. And if you're into really good books, you can get Alice Cooper. Welcome to my nightmare, volume one. Uh, that's probably going to be an autobiography of how he does all kind of crazy stuff, like acid and concerts. And then you get whatever the freak. This is from 2015 where you go to Winton. Met a bunch of people you don't really want to meet and get them to sign your books and shit, right? Ah! And that brings us to the end of this dismal nightmare called Alice Cooper vs. Coyotes. And you can see a little black and white cover art for the book and what they did put out. And, and guess this do a advertisement for the book you're reading in the back of this motherfucker. Oh my God, that just takes the cakes. I don't know what's wrong with the people at Dynamite. Huh? They're, they're missing a, a cylinder or something, aren't they? And they're going to put a t-shirt commercial on the back of this bad boy. I guess that about wraps up this look at Alice Cooper. What? Oh, God. Yeah, YouTube, that about wraps up my look at Alice Cooper. Number three from 2014. Huh. It's got great art on the front. I can't wait to hang it on the wall. The story leaves a lot to be desired. But the art all the way through is off the chain. If we had better writers, it could have a little bit better story. To go with that art, this book could have been a masterpiece. It's hard to believe when this thing come out, it's over $3 and something. I paid a dollar for it at a comic book clearance sale in Greenville, South Carolina. Well, till next time, this is Daddy State on the Daddy Dad Blog saying like, subscribe, and ring the bell for me. And I hope you enjoyed my quick look. And I do mean it was a quick look. Sorry, Dynamite comics aren't very long. Uh, and... Be sure to join me on my next comic book video as I do horror comics and weird stuff all for the next few months of the Halloween season. I hope you enjoy it. Till next time, this is Danny Staten saying, tell him I'll hang out for a few seconds here before I say it. I'm going to say it, but I'm going to show this cover just a few seconds. I got a reason for this. Blog over, dudes. Blog over. Ah, blog over, Alice Cooper. Blog over.